Welcome to the Introverted Female Entrepreneur Success Summit. This is a masterclass series on how to bust through your fear of visibility, develop mindset and business strategies to position yourself to attract new clients and create consistent income and profit. My name is Patience Ogumbono. I'm also known as the visionary introverted woman. Yes, I am also a female entrepreneur looking to gain a lot of benefit from the experts and entrepreneurs that are going to be sharing their expertise with us on this masterclass series. So I want you to make sure that you are engaged and you don't miss any of the masterclass sessions. And today I'm very excited because I have with me one such expert and entrepreneur who is going to bring a lot, a lot, a lot of value. So let's welcome Michelle Raymond. Welcome, Michelle. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> so I will take the time now to introduce uh, Michelle to you so that you get to know her before she starts and uh, talks about her area of expertise. So Michelle Raymond is a HR specialist and trainer, visibility strategist, certified master NLP practitioner and award-winning international TEDx speaker on a mission to make the invisible visible. I told you that you will bust through your fear of visibility today. <laughs> so she's the CEO and founder of The People's Partner, a HR and coaching consultancy that provides inclusive training solutions. Michelle has become a respected and in-demand visibility strategist and keynote speaker, having helped clients secure regular spots on national radio stations, TV, Forbes, and other national regional press. Michelle has been featured in People Magazine, HR Grapevine, The Guardian, Good Housekeeping Magazine, the BBC, and Sky TV. Of course, she would be telling you, do as I say and do as well. So that's great. So her clientele have included household global brands such as Amazon, Mac Cosmetics, and FTSE 100 company. So like I said, I'm really excited and because she'll be sharing her story, tips and strategies, and today she'll be enlightening us on how to increase your visibility as an introvert. So uh, over to you, Michelle, really excited to, you know, get through this masterclass with you today and to pick up so many nuggets. So tell us a bit more about, I know I've said a lot, but tell us about your story. Yeah, I, I guess my story starts from, although I talk about visibility a lot, but to, I want to put it in context for everybody listening. What you see now and what you may see on social media or in the press, that's not where it all began. And for me, Visibility began when uh, I was in a period of, in a relationship and a period of time where, where I fell into depression, uh, where I just, I was stressed, overwhelmed. I had an over, uh, overwhelming feel, feeling of guilt because I was married to a man who was accused of some of the heinous crimes against children. Mm. And during that time, I had to deal with the the prospects of actually being married to somebody who could have done these awful things. Uh, it got into the newspapers. So if you want to talk about visibility, I was in the newspapers from like 10 years ago. <laughs> um, so we were in the newspapers. It was on in the UK, ITV News. I remember being upstairs in my room and someone saying, Michelle, run downstairs and put it on TV. Your husband's on there. And they're as br you know, bold as brass. Um, just information about uh, my ex-husband and our, our whole life was being played out on mm. ITV News. And at that time, I started to shrink. Mm. I started to shrink away from society. I didn't want to be visible. I didn't want to be known for anything. I just wanted to die. I wanted to fall out of society because A, I was embarrassed. I was hurt. I was upset. I'd, you know, my whole world, as I knew it, was falling apart in front of me. Plus, I went in... Uh, I went to church and I went to a very well-known church and all this was happening within the well-known church. So I just thought it's best that I just don't go to church. It's best that I stop singing. It's best that I just stop all of that. And so that no one will talk about me. No one will refer to me. I was referred to as the wife of the paedophile. Hmm. And because of all this, I became invisible. I remember having a conversation with God and saying, if you get me out of this, when you get me out of this slum, because I was in a slum, I, I wasn't washing, I wasn't getting up, um, mm -hmm. I couldn't look after my daughter, 
social services got involved and said that I wasn't looking after her, I wasn't feeding her. So it was a really bad period of time in my life. But I said to God, if and when, when and if I get out of this situation, I will become more visible, but for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And I will pull everybody else up with me. So I will be visible. And, this, and then during my career, I've noticed that there are so many people with, who have such unique expertise and skills, mm -hmm. but they are nowhere to be seen. Mm -hmm. They're not on the hit list. They're not on the list of influencers of people that I should know and get in contact with. So it's always been my mission since then to become visible, but also to make other people to become visible, whether they're in the corporate space or in the entrepreneurial space. You just need to know what avenues to use and then let the world amplify your voice for you. So that's, mm. that's the story behind my visibility work. Wow. Talk about turning a mess into a message and really, uh, can anybody pin that you uh, some some people say you don't look like where you're coming from and and that's 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 the miracle of being able to take a message you know use it to empower i, I always say that you are your failures and your successes all of it are ingredients that made you who you are today and it's how to recognize that that is so you know so so vital and when you talk about shrinking i think when you said the word shrink, I kind of resonated with it. So first and foremost, do you class yourself as introverted, extroverted, or life actually during that period probably made you quite introverted? But in general, how would you class yourself? Um, I would probably class myself as a bit of both because I, mm. I like spending time with people. But when I've got, when I've had too much time around people, I just, I like my own space. Mm. Um, I'm an only child. So I like, I know how to entertain myself. I know how to just get things going. I know how to work. I don't need, you know, most people might need like accountability or people around them to help push a drive. I, I'm self-sufficient in that way because I've, I've always had to be. Um, but then I like to engage with people. I love people. I love to be around people. So I would say I'm a bit of both and... Um, but in, in terms of raising your visibility, there's so many ways that even if you're introverted, there's ways that you can still raise your visibility and still have your voice heard, most certainly. Mm. And I think one of the key things you've just said, voice heard, very important because people say, oh, you need to find your voice. And for the first time, when uh, earlier this year, I watched an interview by uh, Megan, uh, Marco and she said no you, you've not lost your voice you just need to use your voice <laughs> so your voice is always there you need to use it the moment you begin to use it you discover the potential it has so like you you've transformed your story you've made it a mission statement and that brings me to talk about because there's a lot of myth out there around what it takes to be an entrepreneur and a successful one and part of what I've been doing through this series with experts and entrepreneurs who have been successful, you've busted one myth or you've, 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 look, you've talked about something very important about visibility. So what other myths are there that you've had to overcome in your entrepreneurial journey to share? Yeah, um, one, of, one of the myths are, you know, when people say that, oh, if, you, if you're good at something, you can make a business out of it. I... I in part believe this, I think it is a myth because I think for you to be running a successful business, yes, you have to have a passion in it, but there also has to be a need for it. So mm -hmm. some people run businesses and it's just like a glorified hobby. It's something that I like to do, but you're not really making money from it. You, you're, not, you, you're not building a legacy from that. So, and that is because everyone's been told, oh, just follow your passion, just follow your passion. And I believe that, yes, that's important, but what is the purpose behind this? You have to have passion and you have to have the purpose. And the purpose has to also marry with what other people are willing to buy. You don't have no business if it's just your, your, your passion about it and nobody wants to buy it. Nobody doesn't need it. No one doesn't feel like it's something that I must have. So I, that's one of the myth busters, I would say. And in terms of, you know, continuing, continually growing a business, 
and one of the things I think is so underrated, though people talk about it, but it's so underrated, is your network, mm. is your network. You know, we say all the time, don't we, that we're the average of the five people we surround ourselves with. Mm. I don't know, what's the other one? Your network is your net worth. Mm. And people say it, but I always think to myself, if I was to ask you to, you know, name me the top five people that you speak to all the time, mm -hmm. that are in your inner circles, that are your trusted advisors, you tell me who they are, you tell me their net worth, and I can tell you what your net worth is. Because mm -hmm. what we think is our network are these mentors out in the atmosphere atmosphere that we you know we read their books we listen to their podcasts we read mm. their blogs but they're not really in your network they're your mm. virtual mentors yeah mm. and I'm talking about when you create a network of trusted advisors people who are playing at the game at a higher level than you your language changes mm. your mindset shifts because now you're around different people who have being exposed to bigger things and you think, oh my God, this is possible. Yeah, and possible. You're talking to them <laughs> on a consistent basis, you start to walk like it, you start to talk like it, you feel like it. And you need to have all three of those things to make it work. Mm. So, and I, you know, I had this, did this exercise with somebody and I said, right, let me see your phone. Let me see the top five people who are in your list. And then, and, and it was like, you know, somebody who's just down the road, it was a friend, which is all fine. But I said, but who are the people who are taking you to the next level? There's mm. no one here in your top five. Mm. You know, and there's a, there's a saying that um, I talk about is lead, need and feed. Mm. This is what you should always have in your network. People that lead you, you know, uh, people that take you to the next level, people that need you. Those mm. are the people that you sow into their lives mm. and people that feed you. And these are your people that you just chill out netflix and chill go shopping with and i believe we need all of those people to create a healthy well-being and to help our business grow oh wow we've got uh three i love the power of three three strikes and you're in i always say so you lead you need and you feed and that that in itself is massive big uh nugget to take away in terms of developing a business and it's myth and i think if you watch this and uh you've watched others i think you should carry on watching this masterclass series because there are a lot of truth bombs being dropped um but then uh, in terms of you know you said that you're an ambivert but i believe that what you've done is obviously taking what you need to do to be visible so and then become visible as a result but when you uh, think about it I guess people have different definitions, like you've talked about passion and purpose. A lot of people tend to put, you know, one before the other. And I think you've put purpose before passion, in a sense. <laughs> they both go together. And it's important to say, okay, I'm fulfilling purpose for people. And um, I also have purpose from this in, in line with that. But in the same way, it's important, you know, to hear your own definition of visibility. What, what is visibility, really? So for visibility for me is about being seen, being heard, but also making an impact. Mm -hmm. So I usually say um, it's one thing to have visibility, but it's another thing to have visibility and credibility. Mm. For being visible, you could have a coach that might say to you, oh, show up on social media every day. Yes, that's you're, you're being seen, but that's not being credible. So true visibility for me is you're, you're showing up and you wouldn't need to show up every day and all the time, because mm. we know that when you do show up, we're going to get value. We're mm. going to get something that can take us for the next two, three days that we won't need to see you. So visibility and credibility is being seen, being heard and making an impact and making an impact, yes, for yourself, but also in the lives of others. That's what true visibility is. So there, there's always another myth that, you know, show up online all the time, be on mm. all the platforms, and that can be draining, that can be overwhelming. And my, my thing is choose your sweet spot mm. and capitalize on that sweet spot. Mm. And whether that's a sweet, sweet spot is a platform, or whether it's a topic or theme. So I talk a lot around inclusion, leadership, and visibility. Those mm. are the three things I talk about. Um, doesn't mean I can't talk about anything else. 
It doesn't mean I can't talk about communication and presentation skills, but at least I'm known for those three areas which I can talk about. And at least I know that when I put a post on LinkedIn talking about visibility, I'm going to be sharing something with them that they can complete or they can action straight away. Hmm. And that's where, for me, what true visibility is. It's got to do being seen, being heard and making an impact. I really like that because the credibility part is not what I really, it doesn't always register with people and credibility uh, also can relate to association. So people associate you with a certain topic, with a certain thing, lifestyle and everything else like you've talked about, or with the kind of value that they will get, they know they will get value. And I, I like to think that when people begin to share your post or even when you send emails and people respond back to you, that's a sign of, you know, they trust or people actually buy because of what you say on, on, on screen. So it's all about, I guess, from what you're saying, it's intentionality yeah. and the platform that you um, select. So that brings me to say, You've talked about the credibility aspect, but why is visibility? Because actors are visible, and even when you the Kardashians are visible, <laughs> you know, of course, they've made millions. It's very business savvy, savvy way of, of doing things. They've become two billionaires in the 10 years that they've done the show. And actually, when I watched back the, uh, the interviews that they did, because I was curious, what, what would they say their journey of 10 years was like? And Kim in particular actually said, I created the show. And in the beginning, what I did was to create visibility. There is no way I would go to a salon and do my hair and I would not have that picture in social media. I, I had to do it. So I would deliberately leave the salon, walk into a shop and spend a lot of time, make sure that there's a camera somewhere or someone's phone. And she said she was doing that. But I think for introverts who, who want to just be away, um, there is an element of that that is important and there's an element of that over the top and too much. So why is it important for uh, visibility? Why is visibility important in business really? Yeah, and I would say, if we look at it from the consumer's perspective, who would they choose? Would they choose an organization or a company or business that they've never heard of, never seen of? There is nothing, there's no social proof anywhere. Mm. Or would they go for a company that they see all the time, they're active, that if they Google them, something comes up, there's social proof, there's testimonies, there's recommendations. If you were to ask this, and this is for everyone listening, if you were to ask this for yourself, you will always, always go for the the organization, the business or the brand or the service that people have heard about. Mm. Because you don't want, no one really wants to be the first one to try something out and if it fails or if it works, they wanna know that this has been tried and tested. Mm. Visibility puts that perception in people's minds. And I mm. say perception because it doesn't mean that you have you know, got all of these, but it gives the perception that this is a tried and tested methodology, a tried and tested business, it must work. How can they be in the press if it doesn't work? How can they be on TV if it doesn't work? How can you have all those testimonials? So it helps reduce the barrier to entry. That's what mm. it does. Mm. Then if a company who's no one never heard of, I mean, I get calls and um, from different people. And then if I Google them, I see nothing, I'm thinking, you don't exist. You are what <laughs> Google says you are. And there's Google saying nothing about you. And I'm like, I'm not going to give you the time of the day. But then if I Google somebody else and something comes up and I can see they've got their coaching services, I can see their other services or products that they provide. You know, I can go in, there's some press releases about them. There's some testimonials. I'll go on their LinkedIn, there's recommendations. Okay, I'm feeling that, yeah, this person must know what they're talking about. And mm. in a world of we're information saturated. Visibility is going to be one of the things that's going to make you stand head and shoulders of, uh, above other mm. organizations that refuse to be visible. So mm. I, I think it's, it helps with the decision making process for consumers. I was just picturing as you were saying head and shoulders, I was thinking of bubbling over the water or bubbling over 
all the noise where you, you kind of like can see who is above and on, on top and very important. Um, there's something you mentioned there that some people, they hear it a lot, but they don't also know what that means. So it's kind of like when you say social proof, so uh, elaborate a little bit more on what that means, social proof. So social proof is information that you can put out, but also what other people say about you. So I can say that I've worked with this client and they got this result. So that will be a form of social proof. Another form is if that person has done a recommendation, it could be a video, it could be a testimonial, it could be a case study. That's another form of social proof. Using particular logos and being able to leverage them, that's social proof. So anything that I would say is recognizable. So mm -hmm. I would always use um, like The Guardian, I will use Amazon, Lloyd's Banking Group logo, Deloitte's BT, because I've done work with them. I continue to do work with them. Mm. Those are instantly recognisable names, instantly recognisable logos. So it already puts me in the social proof category. For mm. example, um, uh, something came up more recently and I said to the person, oh, where did you find me or how did you hear about me? And she said, oh, I, I saw something on LinkedIn and I saw some of the people that you've worked with. She never asked me any of my qualifications. Yeah. She, she, to be fair, she didn't do much due diligence, to be fair. Mm -hmm. she, but you see, the thing is, she didn't, have to, she didn't have to ask me lots of questions. Who have you worked with? What have you done before? Because I have enough social proof out there. So mm -hmm. really, truly, you shouldn't have to ask me that. If you've asked me that, you've done no research on me already. Mm. you know so you know when people come into your inbox and say oh tell me about you what do you do you think to yourself if I was visible enough you should be able to see it or you're just lazy mm. one of the two right so that's what the social proof does it it, it um like again like I said before it reduces the, uh, the barriers to entry and it just allows people to get a picture of you and remember people need to know like and trust you so they feel a level of trust and I, I'm very much into you know trust so for me I need you to trust me is there enough social proof out there that you trust me so mm. when we're on the phone conversating it's just about how you can help me I'm not here trying to persuade you to work with me mm. that's the difference. Mm. and I think that's that's so uh key is like you talk about network in the beginning and, you, and it's like, I've heard the phrase, who do you know that I should know? It's So basically that's how referral marketing works in the sense that whoever's worked with you uh, and that creates the visibility you need for other people to also uh, tap into it. Um, and you know, there's a key thing you said there that if someone is saying, if, you, if people jump on a call and say, what do you do? It means there's not, that's a key thing. That's a key thing for you to realize, okay, actually there's not enough out there or what I do out there is not clear enough for people to be able to say that, you know, that is why I am a great fit for them. Yeah. And um, that, that's a big learning for everybody, uh, you know, to take on board, even including myself. I, I'm very much out there and people say, oh, I love what you do when they jump on the call. I absolutely love what you do. But there's sometimes that people say, okay, tell me a bit more about it because there are, there are diverse, there are diverse things that I can do. So, and I think, you know, that brings me to talk about the key strategies that are required to help introverts create visibility. What are some of the, you know, key strategies already when you talked about social proof, I could pick up uh, three, uh, a, a few pointers there, which, which is make sure that you are on the right platforms make sure that what you say about yourself you want people to trust you to build credibility with that to reference it and you mentioned things like logos that uh from companies you worked for and people think ah oh, if she's worked for that person but what are some of the other key strategies that you think as an introvert because obviously you can be more out there than having to show up out there if you see what i mean key yeah. strategies yeah. yeah yeah definitely i think one of the main strategies i would say is to speak more mm -hmm. there's such power in speaking and then that speaking can be then obviously 
transferred into transcripts. So you can do anything. I would say you start with speaking and then with the speaking, you can, um, you can have transcripts. Out of the transcripts, you can create five points. You can do a video of it. There's lots you can do. And I think as an introvert, if you said to an introvert, oh, you know, you know, do, do some, deliver your area of expertise, do a video of it. You know, they might feel all oh, frightened. I don't want to do that. So I always say speaking can take different forms and mm. different formats. It could be interviews like we're doing now. So I, I'm still speaking. Uh, I could still be seen as a speaker, although I'm being interviewed. So there's different ways. There's podcasts that, that can happen. Um, you can do vlogs rather than someone having to sit and deliver to a screen because that's not that's not always going to be comfortable and I think it wouldn't be very comfortable for an introvert but I would say speaking is a great mechanism to get in front of more people at a quicker rate mm. much much more and there's so much different strategies that you can use such as I always say what would you say is your top three skills or what's the top three things you can talk about quickly that you don't need to do some research you don't need you know questions beforehand and so when I think about that and then I say, right, the next step is, can you just talk about it at length for 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, you know, short bite size. And even doing that, you end up doing three or four bite sized talks where you're talking about your expertise, talking about mm. visibility, talking about public speaking and how it can help. And then literally just going into, if you're on Facebook, you can go into different rooms and say, you know, I've got a piece of recording that I've done. I want to share it with your community. Mm. That is it. You don't have to do anything again. You don't even need to show up live. Mm. And then they have that. And then at the end, obviously, you have a call to action. Um, and then people who like what they hear, they can get in contact with you. Mm. Speaking is the quickest way to get out to the masses. Then you can add it onto your YouTube. So it's there. It can live on YouTube. Then you can get parts of that and repurpose on your social media platforms. You can do a reel out of it on Instagram. Mm. You can, um, on LinkedIn, they allow you to put documents. You can do it as a video document on LinkedIn. There's so many ways that your one talk can be repurposed. Mm. And, then, and I do this all the time. And this is why you know, people say to me, oh, Michelle, would love to have you today. I just got a, um, an email from, there's a platform called Hey Summit. Um, where lots of people use to put on their virtual events. And they contacted me today and said, oh, we would love to have you as a Hey Summit guest. And so we can just interview and talk to you about business and entrepreneurship. I was like, fine. I said to her, where did you hear about me? And you know what she said? She's seen something where I did a video talking about visibility. And I, and I said, you know, to join this masterclass or whatever she did. And she joined it. So this is where a talk that I did ages ago, and it's nothing new. Mm. It's nothing new. That's the, the clever thing about it. And this is the way that all introverts and everyone actually can utilize. You do your video once and you repurpose it in different ways and give it another, you know, another heading, another title, make it. And, and then what I tend to do is then I make it into an audio. So it sounds like it's a podcast when it's not. You can do that on Canva. You know, mm. there's so much ways you can do this just to get your message out, to get your voice out, because people resonate with your voice. Mm. It's really powerful because then you can convert all of that. You can make a book. I'm writing a book at the moment. I haven't put pen to paper once. It, all of it is all me audio. Every time I talk, uh, when I'm talking to somebody, I'm recording it and I'm transcribing it. Mm. And that's going to be, then I can put it all together and make a book. Mm. Yeah, all, that's all, fantastic all, all, <laughs> i yeah. think the key the key strategy that you've shared today very valuable is you can do it once and then repurpose it all that well. way and you can intentionally use it across as many platforms so you've kind of given a nice key here where people think oh it's exhausting for me to be on all platforms however you can use one piece of content across all platforms and it takes a few minutes to share it across those platforms. And so, um, and I like what you said about the fact that 
you you have the intention what am i great at speaking at then you speak about it and you offer it as a resource even in a group setting rather than have to be interviewed you can say here's a resource i've created that and this is going to add value and i, I think that's really uh, great so um just as a takeaway for the listeners today if they're going to take away a big uh, a big thing that they need to start doing that an introverted woman needs to start doing to create success in her business what would you say is that take away this one key thing mm, the one key thing so oh, 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 okay i'm going to answer that i'm going to just go back one step in in, in terms of the key takeaway. So what I would say to every introverted lady listening to this and watching this is you've made a promise to yourself at some point in your life. Mm -hmm. You've made a promise to yourself to show up, to be greater than you were the next day, to be successful, to leave a legacy for your children, for your friends, to, to people that know you to be the example you want to see. At one point or another, everyone's made a promise to themselves. And I always say, if I've made that promise, I wanna make an impact in the world at some level. I don't have to be Oprah Winfrey. I don't need to be Elon Musk. I can be Michelle Raymond mm. and still make an impact. But how can I make an impact in the world if every day I'm just tiptoeing through life? Mm. It's impossible. Mm. If every day I wake up and I haven't done anything towards making that promise fulfilled, I'm just tiptoeing through life. But yet I have all the big statements in the world on Facebook, on LinkedIn, Instagram saying, yes, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. When really deep down, you're not doing anything. Mm. So my, I think my, my advice is, what can you do today to be closer to the promise you made yourself all those years ago? Mm. That's why, it, and, it, and it doesn't have to be big steps. It doesn't have to be massive. It's just one step, to, and it has to be an intentional step. Mm. So it's not about, about a matter of waking up in the morning and doing some work. What is the work you're doing? Be intentional. I write everything down. I have to see it. I have to visualize. And I look at my list and I think, Am I doing this because I'm doing this for someone else? Am I doing this because it's just something to do? Or am I doing this? It's getting me closer to the promise I've made to myself and to my family. Mm. So in terms of being visible, what is that? Does that mean I need to make sure that I deliver a TEDx talk or a TED talk because it will get in front of thousands and mm. I can talk about my message, which is relevant to the theme that they have, of course. Mm. But what does that mean for me? What does it mean for other black women, white women, nieces, um, daughters, granddaughters coming up behind me? What does that mean to see me do that? Mm. And I've always meant one of the promises I made to myself is that I'm going to be my ancestors' wildest dreams. <laughs> That's yeah. what I promise. I've got a t-shirt mm. on this. I've got a t-shirt with it, with this on it. I want to be my ancestors' wildest dream. I want them to think this is why we did what we did, why mm. we endured what we did, so that the Michelle of the world can stand up and be counted. Wow. So that, that, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> my takeaway. Yes, basically, wake up every day, think of the legacy, think of first the dream, think of, think of what you're looking to achieve and make sure that you put, <laughs> you, you put effort into it. Yeah. And I think sometimes... If you've been taking small leaps, like you said, if you've been doing talks, you want to do a TEDx talk because that's a bigger leap for you. But that leap gets you closer to what you really want to achieve. And you've really stated your why there, which is actually building upon another person's legacy, but not on the same level, up leveling to that next level so that this uh, generations from your bloodline are increasingly getting up level steps to keep going which is uh, brilliant and that uh, the the brilliance and the gift you've already given doesn't finish there you do have a free gift that people can go ahead and download so tell us a bit about you know what to expect from this free gift that you're yeah. going to share so i do a lot of speaking and i get lots of lots and lots of questions of oh, michelle how much should i charge 
you know, what should I go in with? What should I be asking for? What things should I need to be aware of when I'm speaking virtually? What should I be aware of when I'm speaking in person? All of those great, great things. So what I've done, I've compiled, I think is at least 60 questions that I've been asked in terms of how to get into the speaking industry, how to be interviewed on podcasts, uh, how much should I charge for my speaking fee? How do I negotiate? All of those questions. And I've put them together in a really comprehensive PDF that I wanna make available to everybody here listening. Mm -hmm. um, We'll be able to share the link with everybody but it's the 60 frequent, frequently asked questions on how to get into the speaking industry it will cover wow everything. that's that's a massive gift and and of course if you want to get intentional about visibility there'll be questions that you have that are really holding you stuck and are really keeping you your introverted self. <laughs> like I said, when people talk about introversion, some people have this approach of, oh, don't call yourself an introvert, it's negative. I feel like introversion, accepting my introversion has really given me purpose in life. I feel like it's given me clarity and purposefulness because I'm using who I am to really serve others. And there is messes out of who I am that I can turn to a message that come from our introversion, but there is also boundaries that I can create as a result. So, you know, this gift is really valuable because you would, it feels like if you have a question, there is an answer in there for you <laughs> because 60 is a generous, generous amount of answers to questions that people have. And because there'll be diverse people watching this, their questions will be diverse as well, which is brilliant. You have resources to use. So I really want to thank you, uh, Michelle, for the time you've taken to, to really give us some big nuggets in this masterclass. I'm sure people will click on replay, replay, replay <laughs> to get the information. And you should actually, but not only that, you should watch other I know people say, don't say should, but in this instance, with this success summit, with so far the value that is being given, you should go watch and replay and take notes. And as well, you get, you know, a lot of gifts that are attached to this. Don't forget to click on the link to get uh, Michelle's gift that she's offering. In the meantime, I will see you in the next masterclass. It's been Patience Ogumbono, your host. And let's say thank you to Michelle for this masterclass. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, it's a pleasure.